G'day, mate. What's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Danny. Danny. Danny Giles. Danny yep. Giles. What do you do, Danny Giles? I uh, I do a bit of everything. I I work. I I write. I do stand up. That's how I know you. Or is this is in the bit? Do I not know you? No, you know me. Okay, <laughs> you're allowed. To, it's not really a bit. It's just a way to start a podcast. Well, I didn't know. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Crowdwork Cast. My name's Andrew Barnett. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this week's episode, awesome episode with uh, a bloke named Danny Giles, who, uh, well, look, I know him through um, stand up comedy, but he has uh, worked in TV and, uh, well, video production, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, you'll hear all about that. He's an absolute champion. Um, give him a follow. He is too much underscore Danny on Instagram. He promises me he's going to put some more stuff on that. Um, if you want to give me a follow, I am at Andrew Barnett Comedy on Instagram and uh, Andrew Barnett Comedy on Facebook, uh, Mr. A Barnett on Twitter and Andrew Barnett Comedy on TikTok. I am uh, I'm resolved to put some more stuff over on TikTok at the moment. Um, now, if you want to come see me do live stand-up, dates to remember, uh, Brisbane, May 6th, I'll be at the Underground Theatre as part of the Brisbane Comedy Festival and uh, hopefully... Uh, I'll be doing another event there, but I'll announce that next week. And then also uh, Sydney, May 20th and 21st, I'll be at the Enmore Comedy Club. Uh, Tickets are uh, on sale now for both of those. Link in the bio, in the link tree in uh, my bio on Instagram, or you can go to my website, andrewbarnettcomedy.com. That's all for now, but enjoy this episode. This is my chat with Danny Giles. Explain it to me before. I don't know if we're in character. You know what I mean? I don't know if we're two random strangers at a fucking bus stop. I don't know. All right. Is this the worst one? No, that's not the worst one at all. That's a that's a good start. You don't know if we're in character. Wait, how many characters do you want to fight? <laughs> Wait, I don't know which Danny Giles I'm supposed to be. I don't know. No, I just I just didn't know. I didn't know where to take it. And I was like, I, you know, I was going to do a bit and go silly. But then I was like, I, I don't know. But you know what? I'm glad. I'm. I'm. I, no regrets. I'm happy. I'm happy with my decision. So, whatever. Fair, matter. Enough. Fair enough, mate. We, you, look, we're off to a flyer. Mm-hmm. So, work. You said you work. Yeah. What is work at the moment? Because you've had a few different weird jobs. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I mean, I mainly work in television. Yeah. Um, like that's been sort of, I guess, my main thing. Um, which that also, you know, there's all these like boutique little media production companies as well that do like online and corporate stuff and so that's mainly what i do so what's what's paying the bills at the moment like what do you, I work you at, go to work what are you getting up and going to do i work on um i work on I, I guess i can just say it i work at channel seven i'm on i work on sunrise you work on sunrise yeah with koshi with koshi and i yeah, work good. at um and the four and the six o'clock news in the arvo as well so and what I'm are you, what I'm are you doing there? I'm an editor. Yeah. So you're you're editing news stories to go to air. News or? stories, overlay, like breaking news. It's a really fun job. I really like it. Like, and it's like it's you know it's definitely like it, it pays the bills. It's not you know yeah working on other stuff as well. But <laughs> but it's a really good for to you know for a crust or whatever the expression is. It's it's a really fun gig. Probably probably one of the funnest gigs I've I've had in this industry so far. Fun. What? Why? Why fun? Is it just the? It's you are sometimes cutting stuff five minutes before it airs. Um, sometimes you know we're dealing with sometimes pretty sensitive stuff. You know, like you know, um, crimes or deaths or like you know. So we've we've got to be yeah, sensitive. News. We have to blur stuff. We have to make sure we censor people's names. There's a lot of different um, stuff that I find pretty interesting. Yep. Um, and especially just the adrenaline rush of it like you know it, you know could it's breaking news could come in and they could be like we need this in six minutes and you and they feed a, a, a video sorts in to the server and you just got to go and just do it really quickly i like it it's fun that's that does sound uh intense is it something though where you get to go home at the end of the day and you go well tomorrow is going to be completely different you're not 
is it like are you taking work home with you in your head? Like are you? Or not is really, it... not really. Um, I, I'm much more connected to the news and especially global news than I ever have been. Do you know what I mean? Like I've I've seen some pretty um, because we have to see like we have to we have to look at the rushes, right? So yeah. like it, and it's very different watching a news story versus watching somebody actually in the Ukraine who's repositioning their camera and pointing it at all this like destruction and everything like it's it's crazy it's it's yeah. it's pretty wild like um so i i think like to that extent that's how as much as i'd take home with me like i'm more aware of the news and sort of a lot of stuff that's happening um uh, but then you know also i'm just a very aware of like what's happening in the celebrity goss world as well, <laughs> well as long as as long as you're still getting your goss <laughs> yeah 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 like that's a big part of it as well so yeah no it's good but there is a lot of range because i suppose so is it like is there you're on news or and then someone's on sport or is it just you can no get it's just and... like you got to run down and just people just jump in and just and just like so how many just this is fascinating to me mm, no it's, it's always right, yeah because sitting at home you watch the tv you never really think about how many people i was the same yeah i was the same TV. that's why i found it so interesting because it was like you you see you see the news as like a finished package you don't you don't even think about it and um yeah watching it operates really interesting so yeah i don't know there's maybe like i don't know anywhere from like seven to twelve or something like that I, I, I have no idea i don't know yeah. so you start on sunrise in the mornings yeah so and then what time's that shit finish um so for me like it varies for everyone but for me i'm so i wake up at three around about three and i gotta go in and start about four and um Holy. yeah yeah it's 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 wild man it's it's like putting your body in jet lag no matter how early you get to sleep you still feel like what am i doing awake it's it's weird I know that, like people do shift work and like way crazy stuff than that, but it's it was an adjustment for sure. And then I'm usually finished by like nine or ten in the morning, and like I've had to kind of recently like I, I was trying so hard to be like, and then how do I get a productive day for the rest of the day? And I do I was doing things like getting up even earlier and making breakfast and making sure I was eating. I was doing things like trying to get to sleep like like trying to get into bed at like seven, and just nothing worked. And I think where I've landed is I'm like. If I do a sunrise shift, the day's over. Like I kind of just yeah. have to just chill. Like that's like I you, I get what you're saying because especially working in anything creative, there's always that pressure to yeah. Okay, you need to keep now. I got to work on my stuff. I've yeah, finished yeah. work now. I want to work on my projects. Yeah. Where, whereas I suppose for a lot of people, you know, if it doesn't matter if their shift started at three a.m., mm. they're done by nine. Well, that's the work day. Yeah. So you're done. So you, the, the rest of that time's yours, which is sometimes I think hard to adjust to. You know what's crazy is like, have you ever talked about what you did for work? We don't have to. No, no, that's okay. We won't. But um, but I will just say like, that would have been a, quite a shift for you as well. Yeah, th there's all sorts of like, I suppose. I mean, any. I think any normal job, normal job. I should. There's probably not really something the way it is. Yeah. Anymore, but. I mean, I think anything. It always, I always get jealous of the people that have the job that fulfills them. That they're not. Yeah. That they they have their, you know, even if it's a nine to five or whatever it is, that's mm. their career, and then that fills their week, and then their days off are, well, no, they're my like I do my leisure, like it's very structured week. I see what you're saying. Like they they kind of like. Yeah, that that's that's something that I that fascinates me as well. Like I, I think of a lot about like tradies and it's like Yeah. There's not that extra drive and push of like, okay, now I've got to make this stuff happen when I get home from work. They're like, Well work's done, time to chill. Whereas like yeah. guys you know, you and me and like I guess people in our industry don't really do that. We're like we got to work on this script or we got to go out and yeah, do, the, do, do a gig or put our show together or whatever. There's always yeah. something else you could be doing to be productive. And yeah. you do, like, I feel like... I feel like, like tradies, though, they have, like, they might have, like, you know, they're working on the deck or they're saving up for a holiday yeah. or, like, they've got their own sort of, like, projects. But it's just not much of... what the trade is. Like, if you're a butcher, there's not a lot of guys getting home from a day working as a butcher and just going, you know what? Where's that carcass? <laughs> go do some home. But I mean, of course, there's like there's, there'd, there'd be additional projects. But for us, it feels like we're constantly trying to elevate our career and our status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you don't, like, no one's really like you. Sort of have to do it yourself. Because no, a hundred percent. 
yeah 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 because yeah. so it's not going to happen for it. Otherwise, otherwise it doesn't happen yeah, yeah. and it it is that thing where like yeah i kind of every now and then i look at like you know when you're driving to a gig on a friday night mm-hmm. and you drive past a pub and there's a bunch of people having post work drinks and their weekends like, and i'm like no oh, that, that looks like it'd be a good life. But you know what my theory is about this? Because I, 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 I've I like arrived at a place with stand-up recently where I was like taking a break from it. For, I was like, I kind of like walked away from it for a couple of months. Like actually since I only started just gigging again, the last gig I did was with you in um, Thirl. Yes, so that was like this sound, the rule, whatever <laughs> that you called Wollongong all night. Did I? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You did. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, we're about four suburbs up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you let me know that right at the end of the night as well. I was like, ooh, they didn't seem to mind. Nah. Yeah. Um. I, I think I. Uh. I remember I do that a lot, like around Newcastle gigs, because you know how there's like Toothley and there's like yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So are you from Newcastle? And I was like, it's not fucking Newcastle. Oh no, because that's a real thing too. They're the like. You could probably get away with it through Wollongong because they, yeah. like, it's the Wollongong area. Like, damn, they, they now there's going to be people getting angry at me. But um, but Newcastle, Central Coast are two very distinct areas. Oh, for sure, yeah, And yeah, they yeah. think of themselves as two very distinct Definitely. areas. Definitely, yeah. Which... But, but what I was, sorry, sorry, what I was saying was where I, where I kind of, because I'm working on, a, like, a bigger project and I was like, I want to put all my focus and energy into this and not be so distracted... And then I realized like the project is getting hard. Like it's getting, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of just hard work now at the moment. And so I started doing stand up again and I kind of realized that kind of is our going out and hanging out at the pub. There, there is a, yeah. You I kind of like that social aspect to it. Like yeah. where you... but, but not even just that, just gigging in itself. Like some guys will go and play like, you know, like join join sort of like a midweek basketball team or or yeah like go to the pub or, or watch the healthy. footy or so yeah yeah <laughs> something like that that's that's the way i think about it is i'm like that's just my recreational activity yeah that keeps me kind of sane and gives my gives all my fucking energy and outlet yeah i i i certainly enjoyed that aspect of it like in terms of but it's more work for you now it is yeah it is but yeah. it's also like I, i'll often say to people it's it is better than working for a living for sure like it's not yeah um you know as far as jobs go it's it's a pretty fun one but there, yeah. there still are aspects like it still is a job at a certain point and you've got it like there's days you've got to get up and you you you've got to motivate yourself to okay you got to write some new stuff you got this coming up you got to yeah 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 because i like i'm mainly like i'm at channel seven but only casually like a couple of days a week every like here and there so I'm a freelancer as well. So I'm very much like, I have to work when generate you work. your own opportunities. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's scary. <laughs> so what um what what is your background like? So you mm. did you train? Did you do any media courses or did you self taught um, on all this stuff or how did you? Yeah, look, how did I, you end up in this world? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I started like um I was really fascinated with um movies from a young age um. And then, like, pretty young, I started, like, writing screenplays and stuff. And just, like, that was... I don't know. I have no idea. I was, like, 15 years old. And I was, like, I want to be a filmmaker. Like, that's what I want to do. Oh, man. Yeah. How, have you still got any of those screenplays? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. It'd be nice to dig them out and see what 15-year-old Danny Giles... Do you know was... what it was? It was literally the... Sa- the first script I wrote was basically the plot to what Su- Suicide Squad was. I was like, what if a bunch of bad guys had to save the world? <laughs> and then they made Suicide Squad. But, no, but that's that's essentially Seven Samurai as well. Like, it's the yeah. same fucking thing. But that was like, yeah, yeah. So plot... 15-year-old Danny, plot plot ID is not too bad but, See, I but loved, I'm sure the writing was atrocious yeah I would have loved to have seen the you know yeah the, the way the, the two the romantic yeah. leads interact 100%, with each other 100%. in the brain of a 15 year old yeah. how adults but I was more interested what was weird was what I was more interested in first was documentaries really yeah the way I saw you watched a lot of behind the news as a kid no no it was it was weird I don't know why it had this effect on me but there were two movies that I saw that just got me really enamored with film and that was uh Super Size Me yep. and Bowling for Columbine. So I saw those two movies and they just had a really profound effect on me and I was like, fuck, I think like I wanna do something like that. Bowling for Columbine especially, he is like the way he 
break stuff down and is so definite. It's amazing. About... Like I was a 15 year old kid in that, but you that's, know, I, that's I what understood I mean. it. Probably yeah. if you watch it now, you go, oh, okay, so he's cherry picking some, like Bowling for Columbine for sure. is probably a bad example because it's pretty, yeah. like yeah, the gun stuff. But he, he he's a polemicist who, he he's, everything's with a point of view that he's setting up the argument and it's such skillful, yeah, yeah. Filmmaking to make you go, well, there's no other answer. I think he was also, yeah, I think he was also just very good at just kind of um, building sort of sequences that really, you know, had emotional, like it just, it just, it made you feel. You're just like, oh, well, it was, shit, you he, know? He brought, with, with the right music and shots and everything, like and he was just really good at putting together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was quite satirical and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I'm not even, like, I'm indifferent to Michael Moore now, but I just, like, you know, I'm. No, but you that know, 15, um, you are in the hitting zone of Michael Moore. Yeah. Like, that's that where you're starting to think about the world. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, this guy explained it all. Yeah, yeah. It was wild. Um, And so then, yeah. And then eventually I went to film school. Uh, I w- like, And then I went to actors. Like, and I was writing scripts and stuff. And then made shorts and sketches. And um, yeah. And then eventually got a job at Nickelodeon. Um, that was like my first industry job. And then speaking of like people being fulfilled in the job, like, and I feel like, I don't know if this is common in all industries, but it's definitely common in media. But like we, I was t- speaking to my mate about this today, who I worked with, like, and every time I speak to him, like by far, like Nickelodeon was the best job I've ever had in my life. Really? It was an amazing company to work for. So what were you doing at Nickelodeon? Well, was- here's the thing. When I got hired, they were literally like short form was blowing up, right? This was back in 2016. <sighs> All short those form years ago. like i know <laughs> well that's like what nine years ago yeah, no, yeah. Don't, no don't, wait no don't wait start it? it's like what, seven, seven seven years, seven ago. years yeah, ago. yeah yeah so um so that was when like short form all like big media companies were like we need to do that like we you know they were seeing youtube they were seeing people make careers out of it and they were like we need to kind of make money off that we need to make short forms and they're they're stupid like <laughs> They're, they're dumb. Like, looking back now, it's dumb. But they were literally trying to compete with YouTube. They were like, we'll make videos for our website and get people to come to the website. Which, if you think about that now, like, that's so dumb. And no. all media companies, they don't even bother with their websites, basically, now. They're just like, let's just fucking put it on YouTube and yeah, monetize. Yeah, everyone has a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. But my job... Speaking of which, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. I don't know why I did that. But no, no, um, That was good. But I, my... I like my so so they that 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 job was like that role was basically invented because they were and they basically hired me to be like just i don't know make funny videos for kids for the web and that was my fucking job so that's the i literally and i got so much it was dude it was amazing i I learned so much i had so much fun i had so little budget they let me do so many different things it was wild i ended up writing and helping on like a lot of the shows like it was crazy but the reason i'm telling you this um just to bring it back to that being fulfilled in the job is like we definitely had the best job ever and all everyone did was complain the whole time <laughs> all we did was complain and there was a guy I'll, I'll, my mate hayden um he i remember always used to say like you know guys like it's not as good as it is here in other places like this is this is rare and we were like yeah whatever and then it's true <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like nothing as they were just very good at like I, I don't i think it was just a good time for media as well like yeah. I, they had a, they had a bit of extra money they were throwing around i, I don't know but There's, it was the, the culture was really awesome i've still got like close friends that i've worked with there there seems to be a lot to be said for that the about the timing of things often in media oh for sure man i always joke with um tim um Govan tim govis tim Go- govis yeah yeah radio t- traffic yeah yeah he does the i report. love hearing him on the radio yeah yeah Such yeah, a great yeah. Voice. i when i when i um spoke to him last i was like fuck man because we both both work in tv and i was like could you imagine if we did this in the 90s like if oh. he was in the 90s he would have had a green room do you know what yeah. i mean like nobody even knows who he is they're just like point to the helicopter and they're like yeah see you man like it's like yeah it's very different. You were, you were like royalty if you worked in television. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, massively. <laughs> massively. I mean, if, you were, if you were on-air talent, it was like, whoa. <laughs> like, yeah, it was like, and it was like no one else could do it. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Like, These are the chosen people. Yeah. And now, YouTube, anyone with a camera, they're like, oh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. It's it's it, it's definitely like I got in at a time, at a very strange time. Like I went to film school at a very strange time where short form blew up. So they were sitting there being like, so you got to make short films and you got it like they were teaching this curriculum. But when we finished, they'd updated and completely changed the curriculum to like be like stuff. Here's how you upload shit on the internet and on YouTube. Like, like all, all of that, like they changed a lot of stuff to my knowledge yeah. because it just, everything changed so quickly. That's uh yeah, that's, you kind of feel a bit ripped off when you're like, okay, here's your certificate, but we're teaching these guys something completely different because it turns out that's not... not all of that shit's irrelevant and yeah, redundant. Yeah. You got about six months before that. I think that's gone. the way... I think that's the... It's it's un, It's just like, I think the nature of this beast because it's it's like, um, you know, not what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's... It, it's the result of technology. When technology yeah. increases, so too does the way we consume shit, you know? So it's like... Well, especially now, too, where it used to be... Okay, so limited... Like back in the day, 90s television, mm. there was a limited number of places you could get your media. Yeah. Now, there's still... A, like Okay, so there's still a limited number of places, but the content that's on those places like is almost infinite. It's like, huge, yeah. The, the stuff that's on YouTube, the stuff that's yeah. on TikTok, Instagram. It's huge. And I, like, I, you know, I had, like, an interesting journey with it because I, I tried, like, several, like, different um, incarnations or whatever of, of, of doing short-form content. But, like, and it took me years to realize this, but I was just like, oh, this is just never what I wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, I and, and I even there were moments where I'd had a I, I would have had a video go viral, and then I'd freak out and be like, oh, and I'd just stop. Or I was making it, and then it was building momentum, and I was like, oh, and I realized like I just I don't this isn't what I wanted to do. Like, I want to make movies, like in TV, like that's yeah. you know it's a very different thing. That it, that is uh, that's interesting that you'd say that like that awareness because mm. I think a lot of the time you start off um, in these in creative industries where it's all about, okay, you just take opportunities when they come. 100%. And at a certain point, like if you don't have any consciousness about what opportunities you're taking, you'll get down the track and go, how did I get here? Like you you can easily find yourself in doing something you're not enjoying because you said yes to a bunch of opportunities and it all seemed to work. Mm. But then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, or, this isn't Or really it goes the other way. Like I doing. never thought I'd work in kids' TV. Like I, ne I well, never even had that on the... But that's where I think the consciousness yeah. of being, okay, is this something I'm Yeah, for doing, sure. Or is I also something think I like, because... I also think like, I, wor like I, I worked for a lot of production companies who worked with social media influencers. Yeah. Like one of the things that I made were, I don't, I don't know if you know them, but they're these very funny guys from um, uh, from Adelaide uh, called Fairbarn Films. And I produced their podcast. It was like a production company that I worked for. Really funny guys, young, very talented. Um, and they were like huge. And and, that, and I, they were getting a lot of shit thrown at them. And then I worked with a bunch. So I worked with a lot of, like these influencers on, and people who had like big audiences and I kind of saw what that was like through their eyes and it was like yeah it's not necessarily I think like if you want to make movies and TV like it's I just realized that you know I think it's easy to fall into the like if I just have access to an audience I'll get everything I'll get yeah. every opportunity exactly. but it's just not necessarily true and then the other thing is is if you get access to that audience, you've now got this thing that you have to maintain. So you've got very limited energy to put into, like, to expanding. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, that's definitely, uh, like, you get opportunities, but there's also an opportunity cost to any yeah. thing you say yes to. There's a cost that, okay, there's a finite amount of energy you have. Mm. So if you say yes to these four things, there's going to be five and six that you can't do. Yeah. Um, just because you can't service them. That's... um. And and, sorry, I feel like I've, rat I've rattled way too long about media. <laughs> no, 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 this is interesting. I, yeah. I, I like this. Um, and that's the, with what you were saying about building an audience too. Sometimes you think, okay, I'm, you're building an audience, but building an audience. But if you don't build an audience that, uh, like if you go, I'll get the audience and I'll be able to do what I want. Mm. But that audience don't come because of the, 
they know yeah. what you want to do. They yeah. come because of what you're doing. They come because of the thing that they know you for. And yeah. it's very hard to like go beyond that. Yeah. I remember there was like in the early, early YouTube, um, like YouTube days, there was, um, a lot of these ones that like, they would have, there was like, I don't know if you remember the very original, um, shit girls say or something. It was called something like that. And it was, or, or everything girls say or something. And it was just a guy dressed up as a girl and he was just, and it was a super cut montage of just phrases that you would hear a girl say and then like looking through the bag and stuff. And it was huge. And that's where and, that came from. Yeah. <laughs> that became, that because that became not only just a, like that became. Shit a, people say and yeah, what, a yeah, genre. it was him. It was, I, I remember, and I. Wow. Uh, correct me. People can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was him. And then he did a couple more of that, and I don't know what he's doing that. Sorry, but it's like, Danny, this no. is the internet. People don't correct. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they go, ah, oh, he'll probably look it up later. There's no need for me to correct yeah. him. But I mean, uh, there was another one of, um, you know, real, oh, you would like this actually. It's um, actual conversations with my two year old daughter, and it was reenacted conversations that a two year old had with, his, with her dad, but it was played by a man dressed in the two-year-old's clothing it was really funny and they did it for a few years but it was like they couldn't well the daughter's not two well, people, for forever but all, yeah well then it was with my three-year-old my four-year-old but yeah, the, yeah. the thing is is like people love that but then it's like okay cool you've found this thing you can't it's hard to be like i've got this other idea people are like no 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 we yeah, don't no. you know you're the guy that does <laughs> yeah no we want that thing that's yeah. the thing we want because so i think that's the thing i always got scared of as well if it was like it, it, you know if i'd ever I, like the idea, not not that 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 was ever really in front of me, but mm. I think that scared me of like, the, and that I find that scary of putting a thing out that's like, and then everyone's like, okay, cool, and yeah, then not being guy. able to expand or evolve beyond that thing. Yeah, yeah getting trapped in that. I've seen it happen to a lot of people. Literally, a lot of people I've worked with and for and stuff like that. I've seen it happen a lot, so and they get stuck. You've worked with some big YouTube sort of. Help. Yeah, I've ghost written for a lot of channels. I've um, ghost written uh, for. Yeah, are you allowed to say who you've ghost written for or uh, given a, a genre of ghost? I writing? can. I, the genre is for like kids and family, um, <laughs> YouTubers. Yeah, <laughs> which if if someone told me that the Danny Giles I met, yeah, uh, all those years ago <laughs> in the comedy room, yeah, he's going to be writing for kids and family. That's um, bro. Well, well, how I got in was dropping the Nickelodeon name. You know what I mean? Like that's that, so someone funny. was looking for a writer, and I was like, I worked for Nickelodeon, and they're like, what? Like, because that, even though it's such an interesting paradox, because corporations like Viacom and stuff are looking at the influencers, being like, we could make money off them, and the influencers are going like, oh, Nickelodeon, just because of the brand recognition. Yeah, and they're not saying like, like, no, 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 no. They, they need, money. they need you, like, <laughs> like you know. Oh wow! So you ghost wrote for like, so like just unboxing videos and that sort of shit, or what? It was a lot of like, um, oh, what's that noise in the house? Oh, there's someone upstairs. Or it was a lot of branded content, a lot of like, you know, the kids are dressing up as Spider Man, and we're playing, and it's like they're kind of like little short film sketches and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'd get like a very loose, basic idea and then, or just a mesh of like, I don't know, something like this happens. Because I'm, they're not businesses I'm dealing with, they're families. They're mums and dads who just put their kids on the internet and made a ton of money. Wow. Yeah. Do, do they make a ton of money? Oh yeah. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah. Not, they don't make as much anymore. But when it first came out, it was, made it literally, a, like the, the sad, the sad, reality is is um most of the clients that i worked for had the same story none of them were like we were just having fun with the kids and and we you know we thought we'd film a thing and then we just put it on the internet and got all this attention all of them across the board was we knew someone that did it we saw how much money they were making we wanted to give it a go like they all took it seriously and were like yeah wow. it was it was like a business decision that's um <laughs> It's it makes sense, but it's sort of also a little bit like yeah, yeah, a little bit like it's wild, yeah. But but yeah, and so then I've worked for some like some other influencers through just through various jobs and production companies and stuff because you get a lot of these like like it's kind of gross, but like a lot of these kind of like media agencies that are like we'll rep you and we'll 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 help you and they just take their money and don't really do much and then hire guys like me to 
workshop ideas with them and write some stuff for them and whatever like you know it's, i don't know yeah wow this is yeah it's it's an it's an amazing thing too because it's an economy that literally 10 years ago or 15 years ago didn't exist it didn't exist yeah at all yeah yeah it didn't exist and it no like none of them and they were i think terrified of it and it forced them you know like viacom now is paramount because they like all pretty much media just globalized and downsized because of of this shit of the internet like of it, of it just you know you know <laughs> like, yeah. yeah oh i know yeah they had less money that people weren't like that people had the way they consumed content changed so it was all yeah so what is your what what is your dream like you know you say you you didn't want to get stuck in the yeah danny's doing this or danny's doing that what what are we, what what is your dream career what does that look like well right now i think what i've realized about this industry and about this um uh i guess you know i I guess our industry is like i kind of just like look at it as in like milestones so right now the next thing i'm doing is making a feature film right because i've wanted to do that since i was a kid and um all right i'll audition (laughs) that's what we're here for (laughs) okay if i could get you to read no yeah so that that's that's the next thing i'm working on and i'm i'm gonna like put my own money into it try and get funding do all that kind of stuff is this now i don't want you to say the idea on the podcast is this the idea you told me yeah yeah yeah. this is a very very good idea thank you i really want this to get up because it's yeah it's a cracking idea yeah 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 i may have you in mind for something as well. Yes! But, <laughs> yes. but I'm not... But See again... That, compliment. <laughs> so people in the arts, what you got to do is you compliment them, right? <laughs> I, um, but, but yeah, yeah, it is. No, and, and, and thank you, man. I appreciate that. And yeah, I, I won't, I won't say it out loud because it's still cooking. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's, it's gotten that reception from a lot of people, like from, from anybody I've shared. It's had like the same reception it's, you gave it. It's got that... um. It's got what they what they would have used to have called the elevator pitch. It's it's very clear. Yeah. Within you know, like within a few sentences. For I, sure. This is this is I know. What and this it is felt like, like years idea. of 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 brewing and years of like leading me to that to this particular story and stuff. So, um, yeah. Which is this is where I think like. I think sometimes now with the everything, churn out as much content as you can. Mm. That's what I think. Had you gone down that road where mm. you became YouTuber Danny, yeah, it you don't have the space to let that idea, 100%. the idea that takes yeah years of experiences and ideas and thoughts, to, yeah, to crystallize in something over time. For sure, for sure. And I, I do. It, it is funny, but it's like there's a lot of things that I pursued that I thought like this is going to be the thing, or like yes, I think and. I'm now just grateful that it didn't like that, that a lot of that stuff didn't work out or it, or I stopped or like, yeah, for sure. Because now I feel like, and in terms of like my dream, I, I don't really know what it looks like. I just, I just know I want to do the thing. You know what I mean? That's all I really care about. I just want to do it and, and whatever, I maybe nothing happens with it, but that's fine. Like I just, I just like making shit, you know. <laughs> you you strike me as well, I I think I said to someone I realized um, a, a little while ago that I realistically just want enough um, money and uh, like I suppose influence if you call it that like a access to an audience to be able to do what you find creatively interesting 100 percent. yeah yeah like, i couldn't agree more I, I think i think anything beyond that as because because i've now worked behind the scenes and met a lot of these people i don't mm. i don't really um uh i i, I, I mean i'm <laughs> i'm not saying this like i i'll just say this because it's true it is true for me but I don't, I don't really get affected at all by meeting any celebrity anymore just because i've met a lot of them because of what i do for work and i realize they're all just people and and yeah. so and but i do think like even just watching them i think any level of fame that's beyond what you're describing i don't think it's fun you know i don't think it's i actually think it would come with like way more and especially if you identified with that which a lot of them end up doing especially these unfortunately these young guys that you know they get on the internet and they get famous and then they go oh and they make that they, that ident- their identity and then it starts to fade and slip away and mm. then they're completely lost and like just doing everything they can to hold on to it 
it's it's sad and then they're like well, what the fuck have you what are you gonna do now you didn't go to uni like it's well that's it's the crazy thing too, yeah. is i think sometimes now like fame or profile or access to an audience is the goal rather than the byproduct of yeah. wanting to do the creative look honestly things. man i think it was mine for a while when i was young yeah, and I immature all yeah been guilty of we that. all pictured ourselves like being this big huge thing and it's like if i get the audience then i'll have the good idea <laughs> yeah. Like, nah, nah, yeah. No. yeah 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 you've got to do it the other way around otherwise, yeah yeah otherwise you sort of yeah i i fame i similar to you I've, I've looked at fame and i've been able to see it reasonably up close probably not as many people as you but mm. it oh yeah you have for sure as well yeah looks, being in what it, you do yeah it's, it's high maintenance like it's not I, and yeah. for me i think too like like don't get me wrong i like i like to have i want the level of fame where i can sell some stand-up tickets where i can um go in and pitch an idea i've got to someone and get them to buy into it because they're, okay this might work yeah um that but that's what i mean by that influence where you actually have a bit of creative freedom but beyond that as for the people that get recognized everywhere they go i think like, it would be I'm like too, i think it would be like being at work all the time man i'm too self-conscious yeah like, i know why like they you know how that you hear those stories you don't strike about, me as self-conscious that's interesting yeah no i kind of am yeah fair. Like, just you, yeah like i think most oh for sure yeah 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 people are probably more self-conscious <laughs> yeah than yeah for but sure you, you don't always feel self-conscious because if, if you're just an anonymous face in a crowd mm. you just get to be the anonymous you no one's you don't feel like anyone's looking at you because no one's looking at you yeah whereas if you're in a situation where people are looking at you just going down the shops or going down the yeah and then not maybe not saying hi and they yeah, yeah yeah for sure i had once i had once real early like real early on when i first started doing stuff on screen at fox yeah someone tweeted at us that um they that they said i was doing a segment called the nrl store yeah and they just tweeted the nrl store mustn't be um Mustn't be going, making too much money. Saw Barney slumming it on the train, and he, like the train did the. And I was like, oh, fuck, was "How that? did that affect you?" Well, it was did one. It... it was kind of like, "Oh, that's partly." It was like kind of cool, but then I'm like, "Was I picking my nose? Like, what was I doing? You know right. what I mean?" Like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, for just, sure. Because I, yeah, that would have been scary. Train, that's man. like nothing. Like I, you know, I'm not. I don't do on camera stuff like you. So I, you know, obviously I'm not involved in that, but. I imagine that would be pretty scary because it would be like it's not scary as much as just like oh, just like I hope I don't I I, I just I I I guess I I um resonate with that feeling you're describing of yeah. just of just like oh wait what the fuck you yeah know? dude it's, it's I like, live it, in my head you know what it is so it's much. even like when you get a text from somebody or I or tell me if it's like this but even when I get a text from somebody that's like. I saw you on the main road. I, I have that admission like, oh, yeah. fuck, what was, what, I doing? was I doing? <laughs> what was I doing? Does this person think I'm an idiot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which main road? Yeah. Uh, no, I thought, it, sorry, I thought that was a different kind of massage parlor. I just, <laughs> it's, yeah. but that's, that, that's the thing. Like, it's that, just that stuff. Like, I remember one time, I had another time, um, this was after we'd been doing it for, for quite a while. I was at, just at, like, the shops with my wife mm. and we're just lining up to, I was, buying something like a david jones or Meyer or something and um nat just moved away from me and yeah went over, and i just didn't think too much of it because you know she's obviously just bored and i was buying something and um then i, I bought what i was getting and then wandered out and she goes i said oh what, what, what are you doing she goes oh, i moved because that guy was taking a photo of you oh and my god some dude had taken a, <laughs> like, oh, and she's like no he was oh she, my god like, oh, okay that's weird wow which I, how does it make her feel is it weird for her did, well she didn't want to be in the photo yeah yeah but so, i mean in general the whole yeah but that is super rare i'm not sure please sure. don't think i'm saying i get yeah. like, like i get occasionally people that are it's one of those things like with what um the, the all that stuff that mm. i did people are either into it or they're not yeah so they either know who you are or they have no clue yeah so it's not like and it's it's you know it's a Reason. It's a weird thing as well, like hearing somebody describe meeting a celebrity, like even like let's say you, it's like, yeah, but like, that's the thing. This isn't like that's no, no, what no, I mean. but like, no, I, I, but what what I mean is like it's weird how it's like people will so quickly, you know, just from that interaction, they'll either be like, oh, he was really nice, or oh, he was an asshole. Like, man, you know what I mean? Like they don't really look at you like you're a human being. <laughs> like, that's I, man, I remember one night we were we been doing these live shows and we were out um we we're in a biggish country town and i was with 
we we're having beers after the show and i was with nathan highmarsh and the professor james yeah rochford so and um but the whole night like people just do not leave hindy alone like it's just it's yeah constant. jesus like, a lot of it's not people coming up being nice some people coming up with the big joke oh how many premierships you got like it but it's just it was just constant like people just be, wanting to it'd talk be to exhausting him. yeah and it, you wouldn't want to go out yeah like, yeah no one of these celebrities like live in big huge property mansions exactly. like, like yeah. you hear about barbara streisand oh she's got a shopping center under her house like yeah if you had to cover your face every time you went out in public you'd probably do what you it would be exhausting yeah, yeah. yeah i look at i like with there's been a lot of like stories at sunrise on like harry styles and just like seeing these huge just monster crowds and i'm just like oh man i would just his life would be just it'd be terrible it would be so disconnected from anything but and everyone around him i used to think how know, like, could he have like what what authentic relationships would he have left his yeah. mom you know yeah exactly like, like how would you how would you maintain the gravity I don't think That's yeah. What, like, yeah. that was the one thing like I remember doing we did a couple of things with Shane Warne yeah and just he would have like, got it all the time right yeah he got it constantly yeah and talking to him but he was he. I was think funny. he was maybe like partly addicted to it as well well no I, I don't you know, know enough he about him but point, he got to the point I think in his life the way I sort of the way I interpreted it and mm. I might be very wrong here but he, he'd almost like he'd made peace with knowing who he was. Like you think about the career he had had, like he he'd had the scandals, he'd had the the sex scandals, he'd had yeah. all this stuff. Like everything that was going to happen, like he there was nothing that, well, left yeah, for what, him to hide. Yeah. At yeah. what point, what was going to happen to him late in life that would ruin his legacy? Like his his legacy was sort mm. of complete. You know it must have I mean? been quite liberating then. Yeah, think and about that. So, and then because I remember it was that was the thing that struck me how relaxed he was mm -hmm. um, when we first the first time I ever worked with him. He just came in real. Yep, yep, we'll do this. Yep, yep, go in do. It. And then he literally after the show, like he went out to his car, had a cigarette at the mm. side of the car, and there were people like, oh my god, he's over there, he's over yeah. there. And they, I remember talking to him after the a couple of the guys after the show. They saw the interaction he'd had. These people are like, oh, morning, yeah, yeah. And he goes, all right, guys, I'm out of here. Just put, just, just super. Yeah. But I suppose he lived in that. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe, maybe there's part of you that would get used to it. Um, but I think like going back to what you were saying, I think that is definitely the dream of just like being like, I get to do this for a living, and I get to explore and try different ideas and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and, but I think as well, there's also like, what scares me is then just being like complacent. I also think it's good to have still that little bit of drive of like, even if it's just a tiny little percentage of like, but what if I could have more? Cause I oh, think it keeps, I, mean. I think I, it keeps you alive. I want to, I think that's, at least it does that for me. I, I think I stress out about it way too much and I'm trying to. I'm trying to like subdue that yeah, find now the, in find my thirties. Yeah, just yeah. be like, look, it's okay. If she, I just, if, if I don't get everything I want, it's okay. <laughs> I just want to get to the point where I know, okay, the if everything went away, the mortgage is covered and I'm good there. But then you don't like I don't really, and I'm I'm how old are you? Thirty three. Thirty three. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a bit older than you. I'm forty one, mm -hmm. but I'm still at that thing at that age where you just like I can't imagine like if if you somehow were like a billionaire at this age mm. i can't imagine what i'd do like I, i'm too yeah. young to feel like i want yeah. to retire yeah so i don't want to be like, like i don't want to be done yet, yeah 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 i just I'd, I'd love to get to that point where you go okay i still need to work it's interesting because i, get to be I, a bit I feel like about yeah but i, I feel on. like creative people like they never are done because you look at like even the huge like you know these rock stars they're still out doing I shows they're still recording music they're st yeah, 100%. <laughs> but, but, but i think yeah, it's no. just like you know that yeah that's... if you've got there's certain that that thing where and it's you see it in stand up after a certain point like people that have been going a certain number of years it's mm. it's because you need to do it like yeah. it's not to do with it's not to do with oh they they're trying to make it a at a certain point well, that's, no, a, no, no, well that's like me man like I'm putting this movie together and I was like I'm just gonna you know just focus on this because I don't want to be distracted and then I was like that's why I came back to stand up because I was like I fucking just need something like I can't yeah, I need... can't just 
you I need can't more just than do one this, direction you know? to point it at. And, and even still, like I, I, you know, I still see friends, and I've got a girlfriend and stuff. But it's still oh, like, I brag it. <laughs> no, but I, I just mean it's like even with with filling that cup, I just think there's something just innately in, I guess, performers or whatever, where you're just like, I just I need something. Like I need to do something. I don't know. Well, there's something with stand up too, as opposed to writing. Yeah, like putting a film together is that, that's a very long term. It's very long. It's very tedious. It's very. It's a lot of like. And it's a long time before you get the feedback get the reward. From the audience, yeah, yeah, for which sure. Which is the complete opposite of stand up. Yeah, where it's it is. instant gratification it's instant. for sure. So, yeah, I think that's healthy to have have both though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely. I'm enjoying it, and I especially am enjoying it because this is the first time that I've. This is the least serious I've taken stand up ever, because I think I always just try and have that mindset. I mean, I've never really been. I'm not like a grinder like some of the other comics are. They're out fucking gigging every night and stuff. But like, you know, I just would put pressure on myself and be like, oh, I want to, you know. And now I'm just like, I'm just having fun, and it's like, yeah. you know, I just don't, I don't, I just don't care. Like, I'll, I'll book, I'll get booked, I'll do it. It's just fun. Like, yeah. Which is, which is, suits the purpose of why you're doing it too. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. not, you, you're not doing it to pay all the bills. You're doing yeah. it because it's. It's a fun way to get some more creativity out and a and bit of extra cash on the side, doesn't it? It's also interesting. Like, I also really like, um, like, the diverse friends that you that you can... Do you know what I mean? I've got to say... Like, being mates of... with you being and then being mates with comics who are heaps young, like, just starting out, and then being good mates with just, Peter Mizell. So, mates with young and even younger. <laughs> yeah. And then Peter Mizell, who's super old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but has he been on the this? Uh, he has uh, on the old seasons. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he did. Um, He's it, great. It's one of those things. Him and I are working together on the weekend. Actually, I'm, I'm giving the old bastard a lift. To um, so where? To where? To the gig. Where, where's the gig? It's, the it's, I think we're at Lumia or somewhere. Somewhere near Campbell. Is that Huxley's? No. All oh, right. No, yeah. no, no. Huxley's down at Karen Bar. Yeah, I just I'm doing that in a couple of weeks. Really? Yes, I've, I I've got to respond to a message actually about that. I've heard that it's amazing. It is. It's uh, that's really fun. Huxley's that's what I've been told in Karen. But the booker told me that. So <laughs> no, no, I've, I've done that room. Yeah, yeah, a number no. of times. No, I, I wouldn't is, doubt. Mark. It's a yeah, for fun sure. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, excited. For yeah, if you've if you're listening and you're around the Sutherland Shire, Karen Bar Huxley's. I think it's on a Sunday. Oh, night. it's in the Shire. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I didn't so look it's it up. a Karen Bar, and Sunday you go night, in, yeah. and it's a it's basically a pizza place. I'm not until June. Well. Yeah, so yeah. it's a pizza place at the front, and then you go through like a cool room door, and there's a whole American um, style oh, of bar. Oh fuck yeah, back, yeah, nice. Back there you get ribs and burgers. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's where the performance space is. It's it's really, uh, yeah, a really cool little space. Yeah, good, good crowds. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're up for a bit of fun. Anyway, so. sorry for interrupting. Continue. Not you're talking not about Peter Mizell, we're talking about diverse range of friends. Yeah, that, that's yeah. and that's the thing. Like it, you do get that experience, which I think keeps you engaged with all different aspects of the world there's so many people definitely definitely like talking about you know the mates who go down to the pub or i see i see a lot of guys like i don't did you ever host trivia uh only fill in a couple of times oh, i fucking hated it so much man <laughs> i hate it i did i hosted for a answers. while just no it's just you just see people take it so fucking seriously and i just i couldn't I mean, good on them, you know. They get together with mates and all that kind of stuff, but I'm just, I, I just, I just hated it. But it's like, you know, I think it's cool to be in a place where you kind of, I don't know, I don't even know where I was going with that. Where, where you, where, where you, where you going outside of your bubble? Yes. Yeah. In terms of stand up, takes you outside of your bu bubble geographically, takes like who you would, who you would, you know, I never would have met half the people. Oh, 100%. In my life, if it wasn't for Stan, like, like yeah. that, like you know, I wouldn't have associated with them or yeah, you wouldn't have a reason to have I wouldn't have crossed paths with them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. some of the most interesting conversations you'll have. Hundred percent. Yeah, because there's some proper weirdos out there. And, <laughs> but I, I don't know about you, I kind of love the weirdos. <laughs> like, yeah, for a, sure. Yeah. yeah. Love a good oh my cat. god, we were having. I'll tell you off mic, but we were having a real good, real good story exchange about. A particular person that's just and it's not like you know this it's never like mean-spirited i just think there's some people that are just quite just such an anomaly like they're yeah. just so like wow you just look at the way they live their lives and like 
where they think this is going and, and where they see themselves in the world. And you're just like, wow, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It's good fun. All right. So before we go, because we yeah. are getting at time, um, sure. I'm going to get, so you, you've you worked in the social media game. Yeah. Any young guns out there who want to learn to master that world, mm. what are the tips? What Say you, what world this podcast, sorry. you want to make it go like that like this or podcast. just online or what it, what tips have you got for 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 getting the online thing sorted and what are the things you if you've got one tip to do and one definitely don't that'll get you that might get you success but it'll get you trapped and look it's I, a big mistake i think it's it's like it's a cliche answer um and it's probably something but i i i really really think um there, there is no shortcut. There is no, you know, you'll you'll speak to a lot of these agencies and they'll tell you like, yeah, well, you know, you got to be tagging and all this, all this bullshit. And I'm, I'm sure maybe that helps gets it, get it in front of people's eyes. Mm. But I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, you just have to do what you think is good and what you think is funny, and not base it off what's working or what's you know i think if if you if you've got an idea and a bunch of people are like that's not going to work but you want to do it just like go fucking do it i think and and i would say as well if this is me thinking that i'm speaking to a young person yep. here right i would say that um, you are okay like, hey, i would say that it's like it's definitely a patience game. It's definitely like something that, you know, is, you know, there's a lot of competition. A lot of stuff doesn't, um, like it doesn't build and it's, but it's just like, you've got to just persist and just keep going if it's the thing. And I think that's definitely has to be the thing of like, whatever the thing is you're doing. And this is the reason why I don't have a podcast because I can't commit to an idea that I know that I can just stick with. Mm. I love having conversations like this, but it feels like starting another one, just because I'm I produce a lot of pe- podcasts for other people. It just feels like it's a bit oversaturated for me. Just yep. if I was to do it, I'm, I, I'd want to come in and do something different. Maybe I don't know. But um, but I think you just have to enjoy it, right? So for you, it's like you enjoy if you enjoy having conversations with people and doing this, like you're winning. Like that's it, that's, you know? Yeah. And that's for me with this podcast. Yeah. Is the exact thing. You were the young guy in the story, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, no. I, I, no. Like, but no, I think that's good advice because that's the same yeah. advice I've given to young comics about, you know, what 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 should I, you know, material or you know, how do you write? It's just you've got to, all you got to just you have to present something you find funny. So if if it's something, if it's an idea that you're interested in and you find good, do it. And I think as well, I think if I was, I think it. if I was like, if I could go back to me when I started doing stand up. I think I would probably say to myself, like, dude, just enjoy, just, just enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? Because I think like, I I saw you enjoy yourself a few nights. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, but I just think behind all of that, I put so much pressure on myself all the time. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of us do because we are trying to do this thing. And especially some, for some people, it takes a couple of years to get good and you see people crushing and you're getting up and it's not working. And you're like, Oh, I want to do that. And I want to, especially these young, young comics coming down, they just want all the gigs. Oh, how do I get booked there? I bet it's just like, just do this one. Like it does yeah. do the same shit. Just do, fucking do the job. Do in this front one of you. and get better. Like you'll get better. You know. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know if that's a good answer. <laughs> no, that's a great answer. Yeah. I, I really like that. Yeah. Because yeah, I and I think you're right. Like you just gotta. I, I think you've just gotta do the stuff that interests you and that keeps you creatively. And I think it's it. gotta be. And this is might be like a, you know, a hard thing for a lot of people to wrap their head around. But I think it's just gotta be a thing. Um, where it's like you've got to just say to yourself if this doesn't work out well am I still going to enjoy doing this? it yeah and for me sorry to bring it up again but like making this movie that that's what that is I do not give a shit what happens I, I, don't, I don't care if it's not if it's successful or not I just I just really want to make you want thing. to complete it I just want to complete it yeah, yeah. I just want to do it yeah yeah, yeah. To get that, oh, and hopefully it'll be good. It might be shit. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, well, I just want to do it. You know. Yeah. So, and crossed. I think I think that's and that took me years to get there. I think that would be what I would say. Yeah. That's fucking. But I'm just guys. some fucking guy. You know. 
we're all just some fucking guy. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. you worry about that. Yeah. Mate, um, before we go, do you want to plug anything? Is any socials or anything? Oh, look, or man, I, I probably should have something. I've got a website that's not currently up. Um, uh, too much. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you've got access to the Wayback Machine that uh, logs the internet, I've, as got it to, was. Uh, I've got to get that website back up. But my website's not well, I, Yeah, my, my website's um, too much Danny I own the domain, so no one can anyway. Yeah. Um, but not the news. And um, yeah, I'm on Instagram on too much underscore Danny. If people want to follow me, be, you know, I don't. I don't post. I don't use anything. But as I gear up and start putting this together, I'll probably be a bit more active. Of like, hey. yeah. Um, well, when, I need as you, extras to help as you gear or like, up, we'll hey, get, yeah. can, does anyone have this location? Or, I'll, hey, give me money to make this thing. <laughs> you know, whatever. Fair enough. And watch Channel 7 News and <laughs> Sunrise. Uh, I don't enjoy think Danny's they need, work I don't think they need a there. plug. <laughs> Please watch Sunrise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want. <laughs> it. Thanks for doing it, man. No worries, bro. My oh. absolute pleasure. It was a lot of fun. It, it was, was a fun. lot of fun. Yeah.